In 2010, Wesley Schneider had the world at his feet. He won the treble at Inter. He led the Netherlands to the World Cup final. But when you see his final ranking at the Ballon d'Or that year, it hits you as probably the biggest scandal in the trophy's history. Comme il s'exprime déjà, on sent qui il est hein, depuis le début. Donc c'est un, c'est un gagneur. C'est quelqu'un qui est évidemment, comme je pas loin d'être Ballon d'Or, c'est évidemment un excellent joueur. The man that almost won the Ballon d'Or is possibly the thing that most defines Schneider's career. Please. And to know why that is, let's rewind to 2010. 2010 was the best year of Wesley Schneider's career, maybe of his life. Well, it all started in Italy with Inter Milan. He had joined Jose Mourinho's side in 2009 and formed a deadly attack with Diego Milito and Samuel Eto'o. Schneider was the number 10, the creative fulcrum. And the team clicked in a way we haven't seen for Jose since. It's, it's all about the, the team spirit. Especially at Manchester United. <clears throat> hey, Paul, what do you do every time you remember Jose isn't your coach anymore? In Italy that season, Inter won everything. Serie A, the Coppa Italia, and the big one, the Champions League. Now, there were other important players on that team, of course, but most experts agreed that Wesley Schneider was the player who took Inter to another level. But here's the thing, it was also a World Cup year, and usually the Ballon d'Or winner also has a great World Cup, just like Cannavaro in 2006, OG Ronaldo in 2002, and Zidane in 1998. And yes, those three took home the trophy, and Schneider didn't. But he still scored five goals and led a relatively weak Dutch team to the final. And he wasn't even in the top three for the Ballon d'Or voting. What is that about? Well, of course, it's, uh, it's a shame. That... Well, who was? Xavi, who won the World Cup, La Liga, and was arguably the best player at the 2010 World Cup. Okay, I can understand that. Iniesta who also won the World Cup, La Liga, and scored the winning goal in the World Cup final. All right, but Iniesta wasn't all that great that year. And Messi, the golden boot winner who won La Liga and scored zero goals in the World Cup and lost in the quarterfinals. Yeah, that Messi. And he's the one who won the Ballon d'Or that year. I feel sorry about that. Hold up, hold up. Something isn't adding up here. Of course. Something changed in 2010. The rules. From 1956 until 2009, the Ballon d'Or was only voted for by journalists. But in 2010, the Ballon d'Or merged with the FIFA World Player of the Year award. In 2010, FIFA did what they always do. They ruined everything. FIFA allowed coaches and captains of the 209 national teams to vote for the award as well. And that changed everything! If only journalists voted like in 2009, Messi wouldn't have won. He would have finished fourth. And guess who would have won? That's right, Wesley Snyder! Of course I know, I know. Iniesta would have finished second and Xavi third. And here's an interesting side note. Ribéry, who is one of my favorite players, would have won the Ballon d'Or in 2013 if those rules also applied. After his retirement, Schneider said he could have been on the same level as Messi and Ronaldo throughout his career. I could have become like Messi or Ronaldo. I simply didn't feel like it. Uh, okay. Look, uh, 2010 was a good one for you, buddy, but uh, let's not get carried away, all right? I enjoyed my life. Maybe I had a glass of wine at dinner. Leo and Cristiano are different. They have made many sacrifices, and that's fine with me. My career, however, was still amazing. That much is true. Even though he never took home the illustrious Ballon d'Or, his career was incredible. But still, Schneider came so close. In the end, he'll have to console himself with that treble. What do you think? Was Schneider robbed in 2010? Ribéry in 2013? Is this the biggest scandal in the history of Ballon d'Or? <laughs>